Good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to another video with the Electrical Guide. I've been getting a lot of requests from viewers and people I know looking to figure out how to get into the electrical trade as an apprentice. And nobody really seems to have the best idea on how to do it. So I'm going to show you one of the ways. And I would recommend this way as being maybe the best way to get into the union as an apprentice. And now I am... Uh, pro-union, but I have worked non-union for many years, so I have seen both sides, and I'm still pro-union. So this is the IBEW 353 Greater Toronto Area uh, Electrical Union. So this is kind of the dominant one for a 309A construction and maintenance electrician in Canada and basically North, North America. So let's get into how to apply. So first thing, we're at electricalapprenticeship.ca slash apply. And it's actually not super easy to understand what's going on here. So I'm going to walk you through it. Basically, they've changed their process fairly recently. And they want you to read a bunch of information before you even apply. So obviously, before you apply, you need to de determine whether this is actually what you want to do. It can be extremely demanding, can also be very rewarding. So it's really up to you, right? Once you decide this is something that you want to do, there's a few things that you're going to need to kind of prepare for. Um, there's many steps to this process, and we're going to go through it in a second. Firstly, all applicants must be Canadian citizens or permanent residents in order to apply. We all must also have an Ontario secondary school diploma or a comprehensive assessment report from an international credential assessment service, if, of course, you're educated outside of the province of Ontario. You must also have a transcript from your secondary school, and you must show the completion of one course from each of these following areas. So you have to have one in each of these math, English, and physics. Now, pretty much all of these are high school classes. You can, however, take them after you've already graduated high school in a night course version, and that's also accepted. Of course, you have to prepare a typed resume. So make sure that you're really looking over your resume. Maybe find somebody else to look over it for you just to get an extra set of eyes. You'll have to provide three references that are not friends or relatives. Obviously, whoever you choose, you need to make sure they're going to give you a, a positive uh, feedback, right? The intake process is a little slow, so it can definitely take you know a period of time depending on what's going on in the industry. After reading all of this, how to apply, we still don't really know how to apply. So I'm going to take you over to the program intake page, and it's going to give us a, well, a step-by-step -step process. It starts off by saying you should subscribe to receive emails. Now, if you actually do click here, it's going to take you back to basically this little input where you put, you know, your name, your email, your phone number, and it'll send you emails now on kind of what's going on. Process and timelines. Process and timelines. So we just clicked the link that was at the bottom of the first page. And if we click here, we just enter our information to get email updates. So you should do that first. Subscribe and receive emails. Once the intake process opens, and they're claiming that it is open now at all times based on the demand of the industry, so you should be able to apply at any time, you're going to complete the form and pay the registration fee. Now, there is a fee to this, and we'll get to that in a minute as well. You'll also be required, of course, to upload that resume, your official transcript, or your secondary school comprehensive assessment report. Now, I know from experience that if you make a mistake, miss a page, you know, spell your name wrong, anything like that on any of these documents, you'll probably just get put into the not accepted pile. So really, really make sure that all of your documents are, you know, T's are crossed, I's are dotted, right? After that, you'll receive an email to the essential skills assessment. Now, I'll go to this in a second and talk about that. After completing the essential skills assessment, you'll receive another email link for the mechanical aptitude test. Now, you have to go in and do a mechanical aptitude test. I've heard it's actually fairly easy to do. You know, you sort a couple things. You do some stuff with your hands. So if you're good with your hands, shouldn't be uh, any trouble at all. And if you're not good with your hands, maybe why are you applying to be an electrician, right? 
If you are successful there, applicants moving forward will receive another email inviting them to take part in the job awareness activity. And while attending that, you'll be required to answer some general questions, write a one-page essay explaining why you want to be an electrician. So make sure that you have that, you know, what you might want to put in that or, or reason why you want to enter this trade, you know, already figured out before you get into this. Successful applicants will get placed into a selection pool based on industry demand. So basically, after you're successful in the process, you hang out for a bit until you are called up. When there's need for apprentices, you get selected from the pool and you go and do a safety and orientation. And that program includes a lot of stuff. Working at heights is the big one. This is mandatory now to be on job sites, so it's awesome that they include that. You get first aid, you get WIMIS, you know, you get a little bit of introduction to the theory and the apprenticeship program. Uh, you'll meet your apprenticeship counselor. You do get assigned an apprenticeship counselor if you are successful, someone who kind of helps you along throughout your apprenticeship journey for the six years if you do get uh, accepted here as the union apprentice. Each year is roughly 1,800 hours. And then, of course, at the end, you write your license. So let's go check out this essential skills assessment. So the essential skills assessment is fairly simple. Basically, it's four sections. Uh, math foundations. So if you are fresh out of high school, this shouldn't be much trouble for you at all. It's probably what you just finished doing at the end of high school. If you are a little bit out of high school, you may want to do a little bit of studying um, around these subjects. There's a couple word problems. These are also very similar to stuff you would have done in high school. Basically, you're just using some tables and diagrams, and they're a little bit more complex. Third section is science. This is where physics really comes into play. It was listed as one of the classes that you need here, um, physics, right, and mathematics. So these physics classes are going to give you those essential skills to be able to pass section three, work energy power, stuff like that, right, magnetism. Um, next is problem sets. Problem sets is basically just reading comprehension because all the information you need to answer the questions are in the documents you're provided, and you basically answer questions based on information that you have pulled out of these documents that you're given. And they include codes, tables, drawings, diagrams. Now, preparing for the assessment, I don't think this is necessary. Um, spending money to buy a book to prepare you, I mean, a little um, time spent investing in yourself really is better, you know, go online, do a little reading, catch up on your math, right? I think that's probably better value. So reflections on the intake. Applicants did not read material provided on the website, and some applicants did not meet the minimum education requirements as stipulated in order to apply. This is probably the biggest reason people do not get accepted. Applicants did not provide proper references. Remember, they have to be someone who is not related to you and is not a personal friend. Okay. App applicants did not complete the application themselves. Uh, I'm not sure how you get caught on this, but I mean, hey, you should be doing it yourself, right? This is something that you're pursuing. It should be you. Applicants did not provide proper email address. This is so important. When you're registering for email updates, check to make sure your email is spell uh, spelled right. Applicants didn't have a very good reason uh, when they were asked to write the one-page essay about why they want to be a 309A construction and maintenance electrician. They just wrote, you know, a couple lines. Maybe they said, I just want to make some money, or maybe they said, I'm interested in this stuff. You know, you got to really, you got to sell it, right? You got to tell them why you want to be here, and you got to make it sound good. So maybe do a practice round. Do a little mini essay. Give it to your parents or whatever. Give it to your friend. See what they think about it, right? Get that reviewed before you hand that in or write it yourself. Applicants must also be fluent in English. Of course, this includes reading, speaking, and writing, as all of the courses and material are in English. They don't facilitate other languages, um, I guess that's just because, you know, it's in Ontario and we basically speak English here. So these are the reasons why you may not be accepted, the most common reasons. Now, there's some frequently asked questions, and I think maybe some of you may be wondering some of these as well. Is a GED acceptable? Yes, of course it is. You don't have to actually complete high school. You can go and get a GED, right? General Education Development Certificate, and that's okay as well, as long as... 
you have the math, English, and physics required of you one of these, right? The math, English, and physics. Okay, I'm currently in my last year of high school. I haven't graduated yet. Can I apply? No. They want you to be done first. You got to be able to submit your official transcript, right? How many people usually apply during the intake? I have heard it can be anywhere around a thousand. I know they used to take roughly one in 10 applicants before they changed this process. I don't know the ratio these days. This is a relatively new system that they're running, but it is, of course, based on labor demand. Why is it mandatory to have math, English, and physics? Well, quite frankly, communication skills, math skills, and a little bit of science, the IBW feels is, you know, of the utmost importance to be successful in trade school. Because after you are an apprentice, after you become a registered apprentice, you have to do three sessions of trade school. Quite frankly, they're not easy. I do teach trade school for electricians and apprentices, and it's not the easiest. Some of these theory classes can be tricky, right? And if you don't have a good background of math, English, and physics, you may fail in trade school. Can I apply to the Alliance with just two out of the three mandatory courses? At this point, you can, but I know that it is highly competitive, and they mention it's highly competitive. So this is really limiting you. Unless you are actively in the course to finish that third, maybe you're in an online course and you're done you know, in two weeks or whatever, then it's probably okay. But if you're thinking about maybe doing the third course soon or something, I wouldn't recommend it. What if I was educated outside of Ontario? in another province or country and do not have my transcript. Well, basically you're gonna need to get it. There are no exceptions. How can I prepare for the essential skills assessment and mechanical aptitude test? There are those books, right? That I was telling you about on the first page there. They're trying to sell it to you at a discount here. I don't recommend this. I don't think this is necessary. I think this is a bit of a money grab. I applied to the last intake and was not accepted. Is my file still on record for the next intake? No, you must apply every time. Is there a waiting list so that the Alliance can notify me when an intake is scheduled? Well, starting 2020, we're moving forward with an open intake process. That's what I've been referring to this whole time. So you can basically apply to the program at any time. How long will it take before I'm actually on the job? This is probably one of the biggest questions asked. Once you are selected for the program, you're placed in a pool. Do not quit your current job, right? You wanna keep working wherever you're working. As jobs become available, people in the pool are contacted a minimum of two weeks prior to the safety and orientation course, which is still before actually getting placed on the job site. Selected from the pool is totally random. So once a two-week safety and orientation course is successfully completed, you will then be dispatched by the IBEW to the greater Toronto area. So you get two weeks notice, then you're in a safety and orientation course for two weeks, and then if you complete that, you're dispatched to the IBEW, and it could take a calendar year potentially, depending on demand, which is why you should not quit your current job yet. Now, after all this is done, are you in the union? Technically, you're not because you haven't done the swearing in process. You haven't actually gone to the IBEW headquarters and you know signed the papers and got your union card. So technically, no. However, union companies are the ones that are dispatching you, right? The IBEW. So once you start working for that company, you will then start the process of getting your union membership. Can I be an apprentice part-time? Absolutely not. Being an apprentice is a full-time job. It's basically a full-time career, right? I finished one or two years of trade school as an electrician. Maybe you've already started. Maybe you've been to school already. Does that put you in front to give you an advantage? No, it does not. Maybe you're in another Red Seal trade and you're wondering if your hours can transfer over. Definitely not. Not in this case. I was thinking of taking a pre-trade program at a community college. Will that move me to the front of the line? This is another big question I get. And they're very simple with their answer. Any further education or experience you have in the trades is helpful, but does not guarantee entry into the program. So a lot of people are taking a pre-apprenticeship class in college these days, 
It's almost becoming the new standard. So I would recommend taking this to better your chances. Maybe you are in a position where you're already done the pre-trade program at a community college and you're wondering if that certificate will allow you to skip trade school. Basically, no. You still have to go to trade school regardless of you taking any Ontario College Certificate in the Electrical Techniques program. All that really does is demonstrate your interest in pursuing the career, but it's certainly not a substitute for trade school. Now, I will say it'll prepare you for trade school, but it's not a substitute for trade school. Can I apply in person? Well, they do have their address down here in Richmond Hill, Ontario, but for obvious reasons, as of March 2020, all applications are now done online. Maybe you have a family member who went through the program. Sadly, that does not give you any advantage. We do not accept referrals. Okay, and maybe you are missing one of the credits of English, math, or physics. You can contact your local school board or adult education center and pick up those missing credits. Now still, after all this, we haven't really seen anywhere where you can click to apply, but I found it here under application. Okay, application information and application. If you click on register, it will take you to another page here on orderline.com electrical apprenticeship. And this is basically where you pay your registration fee. You're gonna click on electrical apprentice training alliance registration here. You see it's $55. It's gonna bring you to this page, show you the reminders we've basically gone over already, right? Your high school transcript, resume, cover letter, references. You're gonna need also here a picture of your photo ID and the registration video, which I showed you over here. You should watch that as well. So we're gonna close that. You see we're at $55 total. All this is giving you is the registration. You're gonna click add to cart, of course. And now that's been added and go to cart. Okay, here we are in the cart. You can see $55 is the subtotal. After tax, it's gonna be $57.75. And you can pay in the following ways. Once you have paid, you'll get an email right away giving you access to the next steps of this process. All right, once you have ordered your registration, you get an email, right? This is what the email looks like. And you're gonna click through this email, the link at the bottom, and it's gonna take you to another page here where it's gonna start your registration process. Following that, you'll be uploading a couple of your documents, right? Your transcript, um, selecting your math qualifications. You'll get another email for your essential skill assessment login information. You'll come in here, log in, essential skills. You'll do these various assessments, the ones we talked about, science problem sets, word problems, and math foundations. You'll see everything except Internet Explorer is supported and some minimum requirements for your computer. All right, once you start one of the assessments, it'll look like this. You'll have to snap a photo, upload your photo ID, and start. You're allowed to use a calculator for the entire assessment. You're going to have to make sure that your camera is on. You need to do this on a laptop or maybe a tablet with a camera. Then you'll be uploading your photo ID, right, from your computer. Make sure it's a JPEG or a PNG file. Now, they're going to tell you that internet searches and help from others is strictly prohibited. So... You know, use your own morals here. And then, of course, before you actually start, it's going to give you a little bit more information. You have 90 minutes to complete this computer-generated test with 130 questions. Okay. You must allow access to your camera. You'll be prompted to take a photo. Um, and this is just their way of kind of ensuring that you're not cheating. All right. So that wraps up this video today on how to apply to be an electrical apprentice through the Electrical Apprentice Training Alliance, formerly known as the JAC, Joint Apprenticeship Council, and probably the best way to secure yourself a spot in the IBEW 353 as an electrical apprentice. If you like this video, hit me up with a like, subscribe, and thanks for watching another video with the Electrical Guide.